Hey guys, welcome back to Jurassic Collectibles. I hope you're all doing really well. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at these official Jurassic Park Tops Collector's Cards. And what I wanna do is get into the depth and breadth of collecting this set. Years ago, I did a video covering my complete collection of Topps cards that I picked up for a mere $21, and that included Series 1, Series 2, and the Gold Series cards. We'll get into that in a minute. But since then, a lot of people have said, well, we want to see your collection in a newer format and see everything that you've got. So I thought it was time to oblige. <laughs> It's important to note that there were three series made available of these Jurassic Park Tops cards. Series 1, Series 2, and the Deluxe Gold series. Now this is how the cards came packaged in the US that were sealed on the back. It's a single sheet of plastic wrapped around the cards to protect them. And this was the first uh, series, so these were the first ones to come out. Then you had Series 2. Both of these were unique sets of cards. And then you had the Gold Deluxe series, which was actually a re-release of series one, but with a gold embossed logo in the corner and some bonus cards. This is how the cards came packaged in the US. This is actually a series two box, it's empty. These were 69 cents. Here in the UK where I grew up, our movie cards came packaged in these foil packets, as opposed to these sealed plastic sheet packets. I do remember seeing these ones in comic book shops later on. They were obviously imported from the US but these are the ones I grew up uh, opening and collecting. Here's how the UK cards were displayed on the countertop of the shops when you went into corner shops or news agents to buy your cards, and they were 25p a packet. There were also official movie cards plus a sticker, and there were also official movie cards plus gum. And here's a sealed box uh, including the chewing gum, and you can see it's a larger box to accommodate that candy. In a different region, you may have a variant of these cards or one that you remember. And this is the Australian Gold Collection, uh, which actually features a different number of cards altogether. Uh, similarly, here are some clear uh, promo packs that I found. And I believe these may have come in multi-packs that you could buy as bags in discount stores. So you could actually get the cards and kind of see the top card and the bottom card through the packet. So here is series one of the Jurassic Park Tops cards. You can see the previous owner who I acquired this from kept the wrappers for each series. So this is the first card here with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and this is the checklist card. Now, it's a little bit misleading. On the back of this card, it says that there are 88 cards altogether, but there's also an additional 11 sticker cards for you to collect, and there's also an additional four holographic cards uh, that were randomly inserted in the packets and were very hard to find. So these are the ones that aren't on the checklist, um, but are actually advertised on the packaging in the UK and US plus sticker. So these form an image. You can see on the back, these form uh, a complete image. Obviously these are out of alignment because they're in these nine pocket sleeves. You can actually get these in two sizes. So this is the same set again, but in a smaller size. Uh, it seems to be a European variant, if I remember rightly. I think I got these from France. So if you're a hardcore collector, that's something to note. Here are the four hollow foil sticker cards, not included in the checklist, and were very hard to find. They came in silver and gold. With these cards being holographic, when you tilt them, you'd actually get a different image of the dinosaur roaring, spitting, hatching out of an egg. So these were really premium cards. Now, in addition to that, there are chase cards, which are essentially cards that come out before release. Um, there's also promotional cards, and there's been cards that have come out to celebrate um, anniversaries of Topps cards years later. So we will get into all those extra cards in a bit. And I've noticed there appears to be two types of every card out there. If you look at this card, this is the one I remember collecting when I was younger. It has a gloss finish on the front and on the back. Whereas this one has a very high gloss finish on the front and a matte finish on the back. And you can see 
The print quality on these differs massively, and this appears to be the same for every card. I don't know if this was a regional variation, or whether they stopped producing them in such a high quality later on, and decided to just put more gloss on the front than on these sort of more satin finished cards. But yeah, there is a difference there. But let's just take a look at Series 1. It starts off with dinosaur cards, giving you a rundown of all the species. And then we go on to these nice 90s style character cards. So essentially it's introducing all the key players in the story. Then we move on to these more widescreen format story cards. And these actually tell the story of the film. On the back it's got a little bit of information about what's actually going on in the narrative. And these are really nice. I remember having spares of these dotted around my drawers as a child. They go from this sort of orangey border to a bright yellow uh, border, just to keep things interesting, I guess. Really nice photography on all of these. I highly recommend you picking these up if you're just interested in some really nice photography uh, from Jurassic Park. And uh, down in the corner here, we've got a nice tribute to Michael Crichton's novel, Jurassic Park. And then we move on to these almost uh, behind the scenes cards. So there's a little bit on Stan Winston there. There's the visitor's center interior. And it says on set on the top of three of these. And then we move on to the art of Crash McCreary. Now, if you know about Crash McCreary, he basically designed the dinosaurs for Jurassic Park and was instrumental in nailing those designs at Stan Winston Studios. Very, very nice artwork including this one here of a sleeping Tyrannosaurus Rex, which was an omitted scene. They did actually storyboard this, and uh, Alan and the kids were going to tiptoe past this sleeping Tyrannosaurus Rex. So really nice to see that included. If you want to get into collecting Jurassic Park Tops vintage cards, it's relatively inexpensive. It's a good time to start collecting. You can buy a binder relatively cheaply, the pockets aren't too expensive, and even the cards themselves are quite readily available on eBay and other secondary markets if you want to start collecting. So when I discovered my set of Jurassic Park Tops cards for $21, uh, I acquired this trading cards binder, upper deck binder. This was about five pounds when I originally found it, and I made this custom Jurassic Park spine just so I could see what it was. At the time, I didn't know there was an official collector's card album put out by Tops, but obviously after searching eBay for Tops cards after a while I came across this fairly quickly. And uh, this costs now between 50 and 100 pounds, it's quite rare. The thing you want to look for is at the top here where this paper sleeve actually is a little bit proud of the plastic. Sometimes this can be really beaten up and scuffed, so finding one in nice condition like this is a nice treat. And this has enough room for the Series 1 collection and maybe a few spare. I've also got a Jurassic Park poster in here. I have done a review of this, so I'll put links to my original video at the time uh, down below. This upper deck binder is sufficient to hold not just Series 1, but Series 2 and the Gold Series. So I was pleased to have this nonetheless. Moving on to Series 2, the checklist boasts 154 cards, but that doesn't include 10 cards which form a picture and again are stickers like Series 1. The story cards are not in chronological order, they're more like choice moments from the film, but the photography in these, I would say, appears even more sharper than the cards in Series 1. So are really worth picking up if you can get your hands on them. Series 2 is rarer than Series 1 to try and find online. I really like the colours used on the borders on these. And I think, to me, uh, this is a kind of more louder and prouder version of Series 1. And you can see there's more behind the scenes images, which again takes the card count up to 154. Really, really nice. And then we move into the picture cards, and this forms an image of the Brachiosaurus. Now these are chase or promotional cards not included in the checklist and these came out over a long period of time. They came out with the release of the comics. These may have come along alongside series 2 and also the gold series but you can see we have these art cards and these ones in particular came with the Raptors comic which is why it's got this Raptor logo here. 
So this card says top secret not to be revealed until summer 1993. So this was obviously a promotional card. Similarly, this large format tops card was released saying top secret not to be revealed until summer 1993. And you can see they pixelated out the T-Rex this time. And it's got an image of that card, which we've actually got here in the background, the chase card. And it says trading cards, comics, and magazines. This is a promo for everything tops were creating. And I believe these were handed out at events. So here on the back, it gives a rundown of the things they're going to be making. Jurassic Park comic books, Jurassic Park trading cards, and the Jurassic Park official movie souvenir magazine. We've got this one with the Jurassic Park logo on it, which is a bit less common. And this one has the rock relief logo on the back. These three were to celebrate the 75th anniversary of Topps baseball cards. And for Jurassic Park, they picked this particular card, Immobile and Invisible, from Series 1. There were two extra variants available. There was a hollow foil, which I think most people were able to pick up. But there was also this glitter foil version. And that one's extremely rare. That one it actually has a little stamp, number stamp on it. And that's 48 of 75. So only 75 of this card exist. And then this one is to actually promote the comic books and actually came with a Ray Bradbury science fiction comic. Um, it's got the Jurassic Park logo in the corner and you can see here it says official movie adaption coming this summer from Topps Comics and it says here artist interpretation by Gil Kane. And this is very similar to the first issue comic artwork of Jurassic Park but it's not exactly the same. So it's nice to see this kind of early iteration of the artwork for the Jurassic Park cover. At the time when the comics were sold in shops, uh, there was actually a poster that shopkeepers could put in the window to promote the fact that they sold them. And this is what that poster looked like, Gateway to Adventure. So if you are looking to pick up all the kind of tops ephemera, that's a good one to get as well. Relatively inexpensive, not too hard to find these days. For the gold series, they created a premium line by adding these gold embossed Jurassic Park and conjoined JP logos in the corners of the cards. I remember picking up a few of these in 1994, I believe, and they really gave the cards a premium feel. I felt like I'd found a special version of each card. Now, this has the standard 88 cards. It doesn't have the 11 stickers that you can collect. It actually has art cards. They have a gold band at the bottom, and these are new art cards. There's one more on the next page. That's the last one. So there were 10 of those all together. But for me, this really did make the difference. When I saw these cards with these beautiful gold stamps, it really kind of sealed in this amazing quality of these cards. So I'm glad they celebrated the success of this set. Interestingly, number one, doesn't have a gold stamp. As you can imagine, the gold series are highly collectible and are probably the more rarer set if you're wanting to pick these up. But there's no difference in their photography from series one. So if you're just after the beautiful artwork, then I would say just get the normal standard series one. Now, if you're looking for a complete overview of the Jurassic Park Tops card collection, I'd highly recommend picking up this book. It's actually got an introduction by Gary Garani, who was the editor in the 90s of these cards. So you can actually give some insight into the process of making these cards. The cover is actually like a wax paper, which if you know the history of Topps uh, cards, they used to come in what were called wax packs. So this is actually like a wax pack around the outside of the book. And inside there is a piece of gum. Traditionally, Topps cards came with a piece of gum inside. And um, he's also left a commentary on some of these cards all the way through, you've got the fronts and the back artwork. It's also got an afterword by Chip Kidd, who was the guy who designed the novel logo. And that ended up becoming obviously the film logo. The other thing you may have noticed there is that it comes with four bonus collector's cards. So let's peel off this set and take a look at the cards contained inside before I add them to my collection. First off, we have this reprint of Immobile and Invisible. It's got a nice satin finish. And again, this is the card they celebrated on the 75th anniversary of Topps Trading Cards. And it's got a unique back with the Chip Kid Jurassic Park logo. Okay, then we've got this nice little tribute to 
the box. One of the ones I showed you earlier with the 69 cents, that is really cool. And again, we've got the nice Chip Kid logo artwork on the back there. Very nice. Then we've got a reprint of number one, the checklist card, but now with the unique logo. Very nice. And then we've got, this is 2000 and, I want to say 2013 or 2011 artwork with the gates, which is nice to see. So this is actually a completely new and unique card. Now these are not technically printed by Tops, but as they're a tribute to the Tops cards, this will be going into my collection. It's really nice to have something new to add to my Tops collector's cards. So thank you to Abrams Books for making that possible. So where do I go from here? Well, I'm always collecting. That's the great thing about collecting something. You can always find new variants, new things you've never seen before. And this Australian set is just one example. So the Australian set appears to have come out a bit later than series one. And as a result, it has extra cards in here. First off, the number one card, the checklist, appears the same until you look at the back. And you can see that this card number goes all the way up to 109. And like I said, it appears to have come out later because it incorporates gold art cards, a puzzle title card, and the dinosaur puzzle card subset. And while on first glance the puzzle cards appear exactly the same, if you glance at the front for the title card, it's now got a black border. This is a new card. Then they've got these puzzle card images on the front that have a gold border around the outside. These are like the small ones, but now we've got a gold border around the outside. These are completely new cards. I haven't seen these before. Then with the art cards, no longer do we have this chrome and red border at the bottom, it goes all the way around on the front and on the back. This is a completely new set of cards. The artwork is familiar, but these are new. None of these are actually peel off stickers, like the US and UK sets. These are just cards. And instead of the peel in the corner, they've got the number of the card. And I found this regional variation, I just stumbled across it online and noticed that the cards look new and different. And this is the joy of collecting. So I will be adding this Australian set to my collection and keeping my eye out for other regional variations. So that was today's look at my complete Tops Collector's Cards collection. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know I did going back down memory lane and I hope you enjoyed some of the rarer cards looking at those and seeing what they are. If you've enjoyed this video, first check out more of the content on our channel to check that you enjoy it. And if you do, hit that bell button, subscribe and follow along for more content. In the meantime, rate and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.